welcome back to Hot Flashes and Cool Topics. Today, we are going to be talking about the beauty industry for women over 50. Bridget is just so excited because you know her. She's the makeup lover of the two of us. And we are thrilled to welcome our friend and expert, Michelle Probst, to the show. Welcome, Michelle. Hey, ladies. How are you? We're doing great. We're doing Good. absolutely hey. great. How yeah, are you doing? Yeah, how are you I'm doing? I'm doing really well. You know, uh, Bridget, I'm glad to have you on board. I'll send you some more samples of stuff. Oh, <laughs> you'd have no idea well, how I'm happy a, Christmas. Happily. Yeah, Christmas <laughs> yeah. came early for Bridget now. Okay. Yeah. There you go. I'd say your birthday, but it's the same time. Right so, yeah, well, yeah. We're it's excited fun. to talk to you. You are an expert in the field, as we mentioned in the intro. And so many women of our demographic like our demographic is the perfect storm because everything says anti-aging, everything says make you look younger, but you know, what about our skin longevity? What about just looking good at the age you're at? And you talk a lot about that on your Instagram page. So can you Mm -hmm. share a little bit about what's going on for women over 50 in the makeup world? Well, first of all, let me just say that we are over 50% of the population. And we spend $22 billion on beauty products. And so the beauty industry is finally catching on that they need to target us. I mean, we have the disposable income. We care about our ingredient decks. We actually know what that term means, um, where we're not just following an influencer because it looks good at the moment. Um, I think women were just taking over. I mean, I just love it. Like, I'm so excited about you girls and I love us collabing. And I find that at this age, women are more open to work together and help each other out. So for me, uh, you know, as you know, I, um, celebrity makeup artist forever. I created the first cosmetic, undetectable cosmetic line for men. So I have totally switched gears to where I'm the client. And I have, have the group of friends that are all celebrity makeup artists so I can help you girls know all the little tricks and trends that we do I'm a big believer in the drugstore I absolutely promote drugstore brands you don't have to be wealthy to have healthy looking skin I always say that but I think for our age I think we want to look like ourselves I mean I've never gone under the knife yes I get Botox and yes I film it I have no shame in my game and I think That for some ladies that are might be afraid or don't know the, you know, simple solutions to everyday problems, come visit us at Worth Beauty because we have the experts, whatever question you might have, I am not afraid to go there and do it myself, you know? Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned, you know, we know, or you know, the experts at Worth Worth Beauty Company know what we should be having, what we shouldn't be having, what are some ingredients to look for? And then what are some ingredients to avoid? Whenever well, we I've, I've always said throughout the years, if you can't spell the first four ingredients on the ingredient deck, then just throw it away because the ingredient deck goes from the most used all the way down to the bottom. So you want to look for, you know, natural ingredients. And also you want to find out source of ingredients. So fair trade is important. Women know this term now. You know, also I love to support women-owned brands. And I think women-owned brands like our friends at Care, they're their own clients. So they know what they're looking for. And being in the industry, they know what works for the skin. And unfortunately, I think women at our age are just not used to knowing it's maintenance. Ladies, it's maintenance. You know, just like taking care of your car or taking care of your house or taking care of your kids, your face is everything. And your skin, if you take care of your skin, then the less makeup you need. And I think anything over 50, you really don't want to wear a lot of makeup. You want to enhance what you have going on. So the better you take care of your skin, then the less makeup you need. That's so true. And there are so many brands out there that it can be overwhelming for women. You know, every one of them says 98% less lines in three weeks. And how do we get through all that jargon to see what we really need? Well, I think also you need to, if you haven't been to a dermatologist or you don't have somebody that you trust about your skin, um, seek professional advice, you know, whether that's somebody, you know, that's been like, for example, 
um, let's just say somebody is considering a facelift or a lower lift or a neck something or an eye lift, you need to talk to someone that's been through it. You need to go and talk to the other side of someone at that same doctor. Um, I, I had the honor of traveling with Dixie Carter years ago from Designing Women, and she was 10 years older than all the other cast members. So she interviewed 20 plastic surgeons before she made her decision. So do your homework, you know, find out what, what works. Now, retinol is not for everybody. And so there are slighter, less aggressive formulas that you might approach, um, look for natural, but retinol can eat your skin off your face. So you really, when it gets to clinical brands like the Abajis and the Zios, make sure you are being advised because you might burn your skin. Um, number one for us girls, out of the sun, stay out of the sun. And I love the sun, hat, always have an SPF. Now there are BB creams that are so easy to use. And again, I'll go back to drugstore, CoverGirl, Maybelline. They all have, and a BB cream is a coverage with the SPF in the product. So it's not a two or three time application. Again, I know it's maintenance, but they're finding ways where they're putting everything into one product. So I'm just taking a walk, like I walked, five miles yesterday and it was cloudy, but I had to make sure I was covered because the sun is our worst enemy. Sun, the sun and gravity <laughs> at this age <laughs> are our worst enemies. Yeah. You know, you were talking about the BB creams and the ingredients and I don't know where I ever heard this. So now I'm really glad I'm talking to an expert that's that if it was mixed in with something that wasn't as good as putting it directly on, can you tell me about that? Well, I, th I look at a BB cream as for like a daytime, you know, like, let's just say you're going uh, to the grocery store, you know, I mean, even being out in the sun, anytime. if you have a sunroof, I know a lot of my friends in California, they have to protect their hands if they have a convertible because they spend hours in the car with their hands. And that's the other thing, protect your hands, your decollete, you know, we know, remember Nora Ephron, I hate my neck. Uh, we have to watch all of these areas, your scalp even. Um, I uh, had a, a potential melanoma spot on my scalp that my hairdresser found. Like oh. who would have even thumped that? But you really have to be careful because uh, melanoma is real. Oh yeah. And it, it's very scary that my husband had, his wasn't melanoma, thank goodness, but he did have something on his face. Uh, he had to have removed. And Was it basal? Was it, it basil? Was. It was, yeah. and he got it, but, you know, and I talked to him, thanks to this podcast, and thanks to our guest, Joan London, had uh, said, you know, had a list of, do these, all these, go yeah. see, yeah. go get the colonoscopy, get the things done, I started going to a dermatologist, and then I convinced him, you've got to go, and she found it first, his very first visit, she found it, and it, yeah. you know, I tend to not wear that as much as women, but we still do um, wear it. And then you're taught, oh, every place that you just mentioned is every place that I can see my signs of aging. My neck, my hands, I have age spots all over my hands. Is there anything that we can do once they're there? <laughs> well, I mean, you can have laser done, but I mean, honestly, if you really just start paying attention to it and treating it, at least it won't get worse right. because you know, no, I mean, I've always had veiny hands, but now I'm starting to see like my back, like, I don't know about you girls, but I mean, I was an Ole Miss sorority girl. We were laying on the top of the sorority house with album covers with tinfoil, just like radiating ourselves. Like we didn't know any better. Now we know it's not good for us, even though it feels good. But there are ways to get around it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you had to recommend a few of the BB creams, like drugstore brands, which ones would you yeah. say were in your? Oh, top? I love, I love, I love CoverGirl. I love CoverGirl. I think Neutrogena has a lovely one. You know, I'm just impressed with the drugstore. I mean, like London brought number seven over. What they had it in Boots, which is like the Walgreens in London, and you know they're actually beauty uh, assistants at the Walgreens. So if you really want to try something, go for it. Just ask. You know, it can't hurt to ask because you know it's hard to see in a packaging 
what if it's your right shade, you really need to be in sunlight. And I also recommend for ladies in your bathroom, if you can get real sunlight, whether it's a window, put your mirror near the window versus, you know, the bluey kind of, I call it fast food lighting sometimes that you have in your bathrooms or house, because then you get outside and your everything looks different. You know what I mean? You need to have your palette to see through whatever the natural look is. Right. You know, yeah, that is, that happens to me all the time, <laughs> but I'll think that it looks great. And then, and I have my makeup mirrors and I have all the things with the lights, but you're right. It just looks different. And then, um, so you were talking about skincare and drugstore, and that's so important for women, yeah. for all women, for younger women and but women in our demographic, because there's so many different situations in their lives. They're retiring. They may have gone through a divorce and income can be really limited. What are some different makeup products that you would recommend from like the drugstore prices? Well, I actually have been doing some stuff with Maybelline and I absolutely love this brand. You know, you guys and I both have contributed to Gilda's Club and um, I've done other groups before, uh, and they always contribute. And I think that people don't understand that these brands are made in the same manufacturers. You're paying for packaging most of the time. Now, I will say there are brands like Arcana and Clay de Poe that are expensive. So what you do is you buy one, your must have out of the expensive collection for your arsenal. So you have a combination. There's not one brand that you wear every single thing in the collection. You know, pick and choose, have your own arsenal that works for you. And some of it is a hit and miss. You might try it and it doesn't work for you. But um, I do love Maybelline. I love Neutrogena. And I love this number seven from London. It's They've got some retinol alternatives that I think are important. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, organic, and I hate to say this, does not work for aging skin. And aging is not a bad word. I understand what Colleen was saying about anti-aging. But aging, you age the day you're born. So aging right. is just natural. But aging skin, organic, no offense, it's not going to do for y'all. Sorry. Oh, I said not. That. That's fine. <laughs> it's not going to do I, anything I, for your skin. I knew, I knew when you said that, because I normally wouldn't do that, but I knew I was going to subconsciously cut. It's all good. Anyway, <laughs> it really, no offense, but you know, here's the other thing. Organic is not healthy on the shelf. So 5% of any product has to have a 5% preservative in any product just to make sure it has shelf life because, and that's the other thing, throw away your stuff. I mean, if it's been sitting there in your drawer and you're looking at that mascara, well, I might want to try it one more time. Throw it away. Throw it away. I'm so bad at that. I'm so bad with that. It's not really... healthy. Healthy. It's not healthy. It's not healthy. It's not healthy. It's bacteria yeah. growing in that stuff. Uh -uh. Around your eyes. You don't want that around your eyes. And that is yes. so important to remember that too. That, that Bridget, do you, do you wear contacts? Do either, both of y'all wear I contacts? I do wear them. I don't wear them all the time, but I do wear yeah. contacts. Yes. And that adds a whole nother layer of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you just put your makeup on and you forgot to put your contacts in and then it just, there's, oh, it's, I, it's, I don't make it. If I forgot the contacts before the makeup, the contacts. it's not happening that day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk about, you know, growing up in the eighties, um, black eyeliner was the thing and we colored inside our eyelids <laughs> and around. And a lot of women are having problems now with their eyesight because we put all that junk inside our eyes. Yeah. So when I see the younger generation just lining the insides of their lids, what do you say to them? Is that a no-go? Is that good for aging? See, I mean, does it look good for us? Oh, no, no. In fact, I'm glad you said that because my next um, thing that I was going to mention is it's about smudging and blending at our age. You know, harsh lines don't really work. Like under eye, don't do it. Unless you're like going for a very dramatic, weird look. I think at our age, we do the top line and you can even do from the half out because the goal is to elongate this way, right? So just do what I love to do. I wish I had a, we'll have to do a demonstration another time, but I love to use a brush and wet it onto an eyeshadow. And that creates a softer line and it doesn't have to be black. It can be a chocolate brown. Now, Colleen, you have blue eyes? 
I have green, but they sometimes green blue. They, yeah. they're, okay. wow, they can't decide. Green, yeah, yeah, I have just, green, blue. They just yeah. depend so on the you day. Know, you want to make sure you are using a taupe brown versus a red tone brown because right. that's going to like fight the green. Um, I remember I taught Al Gore the word taupe when he was running for president. Um, <laughs> but, you know, stay away. Stay away from orange and red tone browns and go towards the cooler taupe and shadowy charcoal browns and that's beautiful on the eye and also on the brow i think that's another thing be consistent with your look so that same brush that you use to line your eye line your brow and then take that mascara wand and brush your hairs up looks so natural and i think a full brow is very important at our age because it really frames the eyes without looking like you're wearing a lot of makeup because you know we don't want to be i mean if you wear false lashes for an event yay great but day to day you don't want to have you know tammy faye going on so <laughs> just that's a way to look natural consistent even with your lip and your cheek color um you know bobby brown's got that jones road product out what do you think of very, it well it's very similar to cindy joseph's boom not to yeah. say somebody was copying i'm just saying what it is saying is use one thing and i've always done that what you use on on your lip you can use on your cheek you can use on your eyelid if you need a little hint of color I always feel like I look better with a little tan so I'm always using Neutrogena spray tan and it just gives me a little color and that's another trick if you have a little color you don't have to wear so much anything else it just gives you a little hint of youth that's the way I feel right that, but that's interesting with the eyebrows because that is something I've noticed with the aging is the graying and the eyebrows and the thinning and the eyebrows yeah. and, the, yeah. and the, interesting about not going so dark, you know, that, that it may, needs to be a little softer because it can be really harsh, especially in the day, especially in the daytime. Right. Right. So yeah. and, li and, and, and lipstick and sunglasses, ladies, that's all you need. Sunblock. <laughs> I'll Thank goodness, goodness for sunglasses. sunglasses. I, oh I, my gosh. The, the, the thing about the mob wife look, I'm like, that's been my luck. <laughs> I mean, it's coming back in style. I've always loved the the mob wife look. That's my thing. So I if a it. woman is walking into a Walgreens or a CVS and you see you see concealer, you see foundation, you see powders, what do you want to start with on your skin? Like what are kind of the over 50 make sure you have to start before you put your makeup on? Well, first of all, you've got to take care of that skin. As I said, think of things in terms of AM and PM. So what you do before you go to bed is going to affect the way you wake up in the morning. And also think about things in terms of while you're sleeping, it can work for you. So, you know, um, the old motto is retinol at night, C in the day, vitamin C for the skin because you're going to wake up in the a.m. and remove the retinol. So you don't have to worry about having your skin peel off with the sun. So the skin is everything. Take care of your skin first. I like to use a serum, any kind of, and if you don't have any money, it's so good as go get vitamin E oil, you know, or, and you can get the tablets at the drugstore and just break them open. But the more natural you can get on your serum, the better. So treat your skin at night. Then when you want to wash your face in the morning, put some sort of day lovely cream like, um, you know, again, I'm going to say Neutrogena and Olay and all of these wonderful drugstore brands. And then think about putting your makeup on. And your makeup should just be like, look at your face. Okay, I have dark circles. I have some issues here and there. Consider it a canvas. So just lightly, I don't like to wear a lot of foundation. So I literally just do concealer here, wherever I have a little boot boot. And then I just go out my day. And again, it has to have SPF in it. And then, you know, you want to do your blush. I like to do a little blush on my eyelids. Again, consistency, you know, try and stay in one tone. And then a little waterproof mascara, you're good to go. You know, what I've noticed with me as I've aged and like, I love this. I loved the sun as a kid. Here I am in Florida. I do wear my hat. I do put on sunscreen, but especially in the summer, and I can't remember the word for it, but the little like 
darkening of skin splotches pretty much age spots so, well, well there's sunspots too is it called melasma is that how you pronounce it or how do you pronounce that I think that's right. And there's different versions of it. And again, everybody's skin is a little different based on, you know, the damage you've done. And some people are, you know, live in the sun and they don't have a problem. A lot of it is genetic, but these days the ozone layers are gone. So you really have to triple down on it and, and go see your dermatologist. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, basal stem cell is happening everywhere. I'll tell you what. So uh, I'm sure you have a friend that has been through Mohs. Have you heard of this? Yes. M-O-H-S. My mom and what has. They, well, mm. Tim, just, Tim just had it right on his eye. And what they do is after they remove what they think is almost all the cancer, they lab it. And then they have the plastic surgeon on piggyback right then and there so that they can close it up professionally. And so if you do have to have any work on your face, y'all you know, really make sure you have a plastic surgeon there because you, you can avoid scarring. Right. Yeah. That's one thing, you know, I asked, I was at my dermatologist either last week or two weeks ago, just looking over and she's like, I really try not to do if I don't have to anything on your face because of the scarring. Right. But actually. Yeah. This is just like, it. I usually just, I have uh, different sunscreens that I really like that have a little bit of tint to them that I put on and it usually can even out the patchiness. That's what it is. And it gets yep. worse summer. It definitely does. There's a product called Tan Lux, L-U-X-E, that a lot of the celebrity makeup artists use on their clients, that it is a like an oil serum drop and you take your favorite moisturizer put a couple of drops in it and put it on your face and your arms, whatever. And the next day you're tan wow. and it's good for your skin. I mean, like some of my best friends are doing this. I can't say who, but all of the talk show hosts and everybody that, you know, again, you want to look a little, little, little color, but it's a great product. And it's another easy little super secret that you can share, but it's about $50, but it lasts six months months so that's the other thing you have to break it down like is it worth it is it is it necessary for my arsenal because you can go to the drugstore and get the Neutrogena for $12 and spray it on yourself so all good stuff what about makeup removal so a lot of women will use a makeup oh, wipe girl. or can yes. we talk about what to do to remove makeup when we're over 50 it's so hard isn't it like you just want to go to bed right. uh, my my suggestion is keep a little Again, drugstore, Neutrogena has them. There's a hundred different ones. The little uh, packs of the removals for the face, keep it by your bedside table. Because, you know, if you forget and it's like, oh gosh, I don't want to get up, you can do it then. Um, um, but, you know, mascara is the biggest one. But yeah, you, your skin needs to breathe and you need to do that PM treatment. Again, maintenance, you got to take the time and you've got to put something on your face before you hit the pillow, for sure. And now I always love, I, I guess I found it about five years ago and different companies make it. It's like, a, it, they call it a makeup melt or a balm. I have found that to be my favorite thing. Are you, do you have any, or have you heard of this or any recommendations? I have heard of it. It just, it, I haven't tried it yet, but there's just so many different things. I think again, stay as clean and clinical and, and not as much, just whatever works for you. Everybody's got their own routine, but do it. That's the difference is you really have to do it. Right. You I know. Did. know there were, when I was younger and my kids were young and I had to get up and teach the next day, I could be really bad about that. And now I am so good about that. Like I do not. We have more that. time now. We, we have, have more time. More time. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, Y'all so are we, so cute. <laughs> we've talked about Neutrogena. We've talked about Maybelline. Are there any other um, kind of drugstore products that just are your favorites. If I walked into your bathroom right now, I would find it in a drawer that you use daily. Well, no, it looks like a pharmacy right now because I have so many brands coming to me to promote them. Um, I think, um, again, I think I've mentioned all the brands that I love, but again, ask the person there. Like, have you ever been to a Walgreens in Chicago or New York? I mean, it's like a, a hotel. I mean, they have sushi, they have floors of makeup and perfume and everything. 
it's becoming that way. I eventually think it's going to be a one-stop shop. You know, the malls are going to go away and there's just going to be individual booths. And there, there's going to be Walgreens and Dwayne Reed. And um, oh gosh, y'all keep asking me this. Um, one of the brands I really want to promote is Arcana, which is out of Los Angeles. Um, I, it was made for women our age. And it's a little bit pricier than the drugstore. Here's the other thing. Amazon. I love Amazon. I never thought I'd say this, but you can get anything you need on Amazon and you can return it if it's not the right thing. Um, I, I love a vitamin C spray. I think that's something important to use. Um, um, it's a good feel good spritz in the morning and lots of different brands have that. Um, and, you know, I just am so excited about having women our age really looking into and getting down to what is going to work for you because everybody is different. One thing yeah. that we hear that I see a lot is women complaining that their lips are getting smaller as they get older. Mm -hmm. Do you have recommendation for that? Is lip liner necessary at our age or no, never, no, 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 don't line okay. unless you fill the whole pencil in, like fill the whole thing in and then put a lipstick on top of it. That that's only going to accentuate your lines. Um, I, I think again, treat your lips, their skin, you know, we have to pay a little, like I use Vaseline. Let's go back to the old school. Like, you know, Anita Roddick, who started the body shop. When I started my first cosmetic line, I researched her and she found that the most beautiful women in the world use the earth for products. And she was the first one to do organic. She was the first one to do recyclable. And, um, and you know, it's just getting back down to the roots, I think it's important. Vaseline all day long. You can right. get that at the drugstore. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it really does. And then they start. And your feet things. and feet, ladies, oh, feet, feet. Yeah. Do Vaseline and socks at night. I don't know. I can't sleep in socks all night long. I have to throw them off, but I do like to do a little treatment to the feet because yeah. they mm -hmm. at our age have paid the price of high heels and all of that stuff, right? And they crack and they are nasty looking unless you get <laughs> unless you get pedicures. Yeah. I, I was gonna ask about, you know, the little things like you sent Colleen and I those wonderful roller that we keep in the fridge or keep in the yeah. freezer and you roll it. What are some products there that you think are really great? Well, I tell you one thing I've been using, um, it's a radiating uh, little machine that I've got it on the site and I'll get you all the info before this rolls. I can really see a difference in my neckline and you just plug it in. It's about 40 bucks, I think. Now you would pay hundreds of dollars for this treatment at, you know, any kind of medi spa. And I do it at home. Like if I'm watching the news, I get up really early. And so like, I had that quiet Zen time and see what's going on in the world. And that's when I do it. And it really tightens up your jawline because again, with your collagen and the gravity pulling, your lip is getting smaller because the top part between your nose and your lip is being pulled down. And anything with collagen is, is good, but topically, let's face it, you, you really, you have to look for more scarier options than just anything topical for the neck i mean you can smooth that skin out all day long but but this thing really works so um i will send y'all a link to it and i got it on amazon and i'll you know somebody will suggest something to me we get a lot of questions that were worth um and i um, just happy to answer and and find out what works and what's the simple solution because as long as you're doing something and that you're aware of it i mean have you run into a friend before that you haven't seen them forever and they're the same age as you and you see them from a distance and you think, oh my God, they're the same age as me. And I think, you know what? I look okay because I work at it. And I'm not saying everybody has to work at it, but it's a little simple things just to feel good about yourself. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And that that's another thing I want to just touch on is that you really, you really mentor people. Or you really kind of made that your mission, like you yeah. to Colleen and I, which was fabulous. And and can you talk a little bit about how why that is important to you and really why, you know, Worth Beauty Company and what you do on Instagram, why you like to share that? It is so important. And, you know, I wanted to touch on, too, about being an entrepreneur 
entrepreneur. Um, over the years, I've, I've uh, received a lot of accolades for being an entrepreneur. I don't think you grow up thinking you're going to be an entrepreneur. Do you know what I mean? Like, at least I didn't know that was a word, really. And then um, going through different phases of celebrity, then to the brand, getting the first cosmetic line for men into Nordstrom, all of these things. Somebody helped me before. And I always knew the women that brought me up that I would bring the others up. And so, you know, there was a three-year miss in my career uh, from a health scare. And now I'm just so excited to bring my knowledge, my group of friends' knowledge to help women feel good about themselves because that's what it's about. I mean, I'm like everybody else. I look in the mirror and I go, oh man, what is this? What happened here? You know, we all do it. But if we could look in the mirror and go, I'm alive and I feel so good about it and I want to present the best part of me, um, you know, women like Brene Brown and, and all these other women that help you find the right words to say what you're feeling. For me, it's teaching what I know, which is makeup and skincare and um, just the maintenance of it all. And um, just that women over 50, we're everything. And we are ruling the world. I mean, look at the music industry, for example. It's all women. I love it. I just It's just a really good time to be a woman over 50 because we are living longer and we need to go, oh, God, I, you know, look at our ancestors. Our grandmothers did not look like this. I'm 61. My grandmother did not look like this at 61, but I've worked at it, you know. Now, I haven't done too much i still have lifelines and we need to respect lifelines what's wrong with that why do we have to go oh my god 60 what let's go i'm alive and i'm gonna help everybody else along the way that's the way it feels yeah, and worth up. it and you're and worth it, it. Yeah. yes yeah. oh wait you know? that's a slogan <laughs> <laughs> That was a brilliant slogan. Well, thank you so well, much. We appreciate it. Thank you, ladies. Oh, and you're just, you know, all this information is really going to help our listeners. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And you guys inspire me. So anything I can do for y'all in back and forth, let's let's do some more stuff. That thank was you so great. Nice. Thank you.